welcome to Orion Today. I'm Joe Johnson, and once again, I am joined by Kim Urbanowski. Thanks for joining us. No problem. Thanks for having me back. Got to start off by saying happy birthday. Thank you very much. Thank big, you. Uh, big plans today? No, I'll probably just go to dinner with the family. I mean, it's a Tuesday, you know, got things to do in the morning, but, you know, we might do something over the weekend. What's your go-to place? Like, my family, whenever a birthday rolls around, they get to pick a place that yeah. everyone goes to. Where? What's your go-to place? You know, lately, the family, when the family's around, when we have all of us, we've been going to Old Detroit, but... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, maybe that might happen. Okay. Yeah, so, I don't know, I haven't decided. Maybe they'll surprise me and figure it all out so I don't have to think about it. <laughs> That's right. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, warm weather has kind of returned. It's a little gloomy today, yeah. but, wow, these past couple of weeks were miserable. I know. I felt like we had a better February than we had March, and the big dumping of snow we got last week. Well, on the weekend too. Why does it? Why does it have to do that yeah. on the weekend? Come on. I just want to put much. the top down and drive. I, I know. Go over a drive, but I just stayed home all weekend and was under a blanket. So. It's unpredictable, and that's the worst part, right? We're coming up to April, and let's yeah. let's not keep doing the snow thing. Let's not. <laughs> I know. I remember one year when the Tiger home opener was postponed because there was snow mm -hmm. on the field. So that was that was April. So yeah, yeah you're not let's hope to. that's not the case. Yeah. Uh, we got Easter weekend coming up this weekend. Mm. Uh, we get a three day weekend here. I'm excited about what uh, any Easter plans? Again, just family stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I, my kids are strewn everywhere, and yeah. families far and wide. So. So they're not hunting for eggs this weekend. Huh? Um, we'll probably <laughs> still decorate. I mean, the only <laughs> ones left are they're a little bit older, but they still do like to do that kind of thing. So we'll yeah, still yeah. do that. Yeah, it's it's kind of sad when you have to admit to yourself that you you've grown out of hunting for eggs and waking up to find a basket on the yeah. table. You know that sort of thing. But we're still gonna get some chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I remember one time when I was a kid. Uh, we, I had two younger sisters and an older brother, and we got up before my mom did and started hunting for eggs. And we were like, wow, she really hit them well this year. And we're, we're tearing the place apart. We're looking in shoes and everything. And my mom gets up. She's like, what are you guys doing? And I said, oh, we're looking for the Easter eggs. And her eyes got huge. Oh, no. And she goes into the fridge, and there were several cartons of Easter eggs. And Apparently she hid them all in the refrigerator that year. So, so we See, all had to go. Tricked you, <laughs> totally tricked you. The best hiding place ever. <laughs> but yeah, every every year, you know, there'd be baskets and chocolate mm -hmm. and candy and everything. So, what we're doing this year is uh, on Good Friday. We all have Good Friday off. So we grew up in Hamtramck, mm -hmm. and so we're all going to meet in Hamtramck this Friday and have some Polish food at Polonia or mm -hmm. one of those Polish restaurants in Hamtramck. That's always fun to go back there uh, for a little bit. My in-laws used to do the thing, you know, with the take the basket with certain things in the in the Polish tradition. It's the sausage and eggs and the bread and all of that, and go have it. That was in Buffalo, um, New York, but yeah, um, yeah. The, the, they'd get the basket blessed. Is that yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah? Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> oh my God! You. Happy birthday, dear Kimmy! You're so sweet. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to, to you! you. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! So, thank you. That's oh, whoa! Oh, that okay. would have been a good blooper. That would have been on the American <laughs> <laughs> we would have won for that one. Thanks, you guys. I don't like those slippery things. I know. Things. I've seen a lot of videos that with that. doesn't even work. You got it. You got it. All right, there we go. It's perfect. All right. Bust Thank you, guys. Later. Thank you so much. <laughs> so <There's lunch>. awesome. <laughs> yeah. So then on uh, Easter Sunday, my sister's inviting everyone over for breakfast and. Uh, uh, one of our traditions is just uh, fresh kielbasa. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love fresh kielbasa on Easter morning. So yeah. uh, we'll go out there for breakfast Easter morning, and then my aunt's going to host Easter dinner uh, later that day. So I'll yeah. be out running around this weekend doing family stuff. That's fun. It's so. the best way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else exciting coming up? Any, uh, any plans going on? No, I mean, I, you know, my, my one daughter is in a color guard um, group that's out of Ohio and they're doing their um, world finals in a couple weeks. So, so the family, the entire family is going to go to Dayton to cheer her on. So um, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. 
That's mm. uh, oh, the, 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 those band families stay busy, don't they? Yeah, we do. But it keeps <laughs> kids out of trouble, so. I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, here in Lake Orion, you know, over the past couple of weeks, there's been lots of uh, Easter events. I know uh, mm -hmm. last weekend, Canterbury Village had their big egg drop. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's been a couple other Easter events. Uh, the Orion Township had their Bunny Bop, which is always a fun event. Uh, they had three sessions that were filled with kids and family members here at the Orient Center. Yeah. And uh, a relatively new organization, Awesome and Unique Special Needs Foundation, uh, they had their Easter egg hunt uh, immediately after the Bunny Bop. So uh, I was busy. That was on a Saturday. I was out running around covering those. So mm -hmm. here's a look at uh, the recent Easter hunts that took place here in Lake Orient. On the morning of Saturday, March 16th, Orion Township hosted its annual Bunny Bop at the Orion Center. Prior to the event, families were invited to sign up for one of three sessions that took place at 9.30, 10.30, and 11.30 a.m. Approximately 150 family members took part in the event to enjoy games, photo ops with the Easter Bunny, and an Easter egg hunt on the grounds behind the Orion Center. This is one of the best parts of my job. It's so nice when all the planning is done and the actual day is here and you can kind of chill and just watch parents having fun with their kids. It's such a Kodak moment. You've got to get lots of pictures because they grow so fast. So you got to get pictures of them now. The Bunny Bop began in 2010 at Friendship Park, then moved to the Senior Center in 2012, which is now home to the Lake Orion Village offices. The event moved to the Orion Center in 2013, which allowed Parks and Rec to invite more families. Bunny Bob started out at Friendship Park a handful of years ago, um, and that was probably not the best location for that. Um, just we didn't have any indoor facility to kind of keep everybody warm because sometimes we get some not so nice Michigan weather. And over the years, it's just evolved, and here we are in the Orion Center this year. Talk about the uh, weather conditions outside for the egg hunt today. Well, the weather conditions are probably the best we've had in years. We've had years where we've had horizontal snow, rain, you name it. Today is beautiful, so it's a great day for an egg hunt. Meanwhile, as the bunny bop wound down, things were just getting underway at the Cirque Building on Scripps Road. The AU Special Needs Foundation hosted their annual Easter egg hunt at the Cirque Building for the first time, inviting families to enjoy a nice buffet lunch at the cafeteria, activities, games, and crafts in the gymnasium, and photo ops with the Easter Bunny. Volunteers helped spread the plastic eggs in the courtyard, and at approximately 1.30, the Easter egg hunt got underway. There's a, a lack of these events in this area, so my sister um, and other family members of mine are special needs, and we figured out a long time ago that these were great events and they were just so far away, so we started hosting them ourselves. Uh, it makes me feel better than anything knowing that I'm a part of it, um, and I am just a small part of it. We have a lot of volunteers, and my mom is really the one who does all the work. She just points, and that's where I go. The event was free to the public, and it's estimated that approximately 200 people got in on the fun. Of course, the AU Special Needs Foundation depends on community involvement and donations to make this event possible. Well, we actually have had a significant amount of fundraising the past year, and we have a lot more fundraising scheduled for this year. So each year our events grow, and we're just trying to keep up with how fast they grow. The foundation has several more events and fundraisers planned throughout the year. For more information, visit AUSNF.org. From the Cirque Building in Orion Township, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. So yeah, those were fun events and the mm -hmm. kids have fun. Uh, it was really awesome. and. Uh, the AU Foundation's doing great things. You know, they only recently became a 501c3 and they've been yeah. doing picnics and the Halloween Good. trunk or treat. And now they're Easter egg hunt. It's really great to see them uh, giving back to the community. It's yes. pretty awesome. 
So, all right, joining us now is Matt Gibb, our new director at the DDA. Ooh. Welcome on board. Thank you and happy birthday, Thank Kim. You. That's awesome. Thank that, you. Uh, another milestone for you. Oh, so, yeah. That's well, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. It's a good day. Now, obviously, you're, you're not a newcomer to this community. You have a long history in this community. You're a former township supervisor. Uh, you played a significant role in uh, having this building that we're sitting in right now uh, built. And, uh, yeah, you've done a lot for this community. Uh, are you a lifelong uh, Lake Orion resident? Did you grow up here in this area? Oh gosh, it's a it's a quick and funny story. So I was running for um, trustee. Gosh, when she was still in grade school, probably on these birthdays. Stop it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, another trustee, John Steimel, who's mm -hmm. another great longtime leader of the community. He and I are knocking on doors, and a, a guy asked me. He said, "Well, how long have you been here?" I said, well, "I moved in in 1995, and at that point it had to have been 12." 14 years that I lived in Lake Orion. And yeah. he said, well, you just moved in. You're one of the newcomers. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, now I've been here 30 years. I still feel like a little bit of a newcomer. But uh, so not lifelong, but um, I have such a great appreciation and personal yeah. way since I grew up in an old historic home and giving tours and all that, the importance of the legacy of what this community is. So it's a yeah. great community. You came out right around the same time I did. I came out here late 93 into mm -hmm. 94, yeah. moved out here in 94. And, so yeah, yeah, 30 years goes by in the blink of an eye. It's good, I'm yeah. excited to be here um, in this studio because it was such an integral discussion as you and I have talked about many times yeah. of, of all of the incarnations of this great um, public asset that mm -hmm. is Orient Network Television. And to see it now and where it's come and where it's been and you got podcast rooms and all <laughs> and this is, Joe, I can't thank you all enough for, for carrying the vision for the community. It's just, it's. Wonderful, and the, the fact that this was just going to be a little add-on piece so that we could even dream to afford this great Orient Center yeah. was all to the credit of the board of On TV, so it's great. Yeah, oh, thanks. Yeah, this is uh, my home away from home. I probably spend more time here than I do at home. <laughs> uh, what was it like when uh, when you were supervisor? What what are the accomplishments you think you're most proud of being uh, Orient Township supervisor? I'll be honest with you. The, the accomplishments are the team that was there. Right, the team that's here now. And and I said the other day, our great supervisor we have now, Chris Barnett, has done such an excellent job of, you can be part of a community and have vision and you can pull things off. Like we, we did keep GM alive, but it takes all of that team behind it. Mm -hmm. Now they're gonna build electric vehicles there and the battery, all of those little things. That water tower was instrumental to keeping them there, but then that helps us on our water rates over all these years. The, you know, this building was, was the, the, the senior center was falling apart in the village, the old mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, church on Church Street. Yeah. And we concocted the idea, maybe it's the wrong word, we, we created the idea, <laughs> <Envision>. <laughs> collaborated the idea of, um, of maybe the village could move there. And then that means we got Lockhart's and 313 Pete's, it, all of these things. So what am I most proud of, of, of just being a small part of kind of the dream of this community of like how we can be better and bigger. And, and we've got great leaders in Kim and, and it's just, uh, that's the greatest thing that I can look back at. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, it's little things too, like I, I'm not even sure if you're aware of this little legacy, but every year uh, Orient Township has the summer sizzle uh, mm -hmm. out behind this building. And I remember one year when I was covering it, I was doing some research looking into the history of it. And what I discovered is during that recession that everybody went through around 2009, That's 2000. That's fun, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice, yeah. And yeah, uh, I had read that you're like, let's do something to just lift the spirits yeah. of people around here. Yeah. And so it started out, I think at Civic Center Park, and it was just a barbecue, hot dog, stuff for the kids. And here, all these years later, it's still going and it's more popular than ever. So mm -hmm. it's little things I, like that. I think that's the special nature of who we are as a community, right? Uh, that, you know, a small group of people can come together and have an idea. I mean, look at the miracle field we Correct. have now. Look at all of these unbelievable things we have. I mean, Summer Sizzle was cool. And in those times, Joe, that, you know, when, when um, I got elected in 2008, shows you how old I am now, <laughs> as supervisor, um, you know, I got the call, it was confidential. Um, you know, GM's gonna go bankrupt after the first of the year and I couldn't <laughs> tell anybody, oh right? I was gosh. threatened with all of these things. And so, you know, we survived through that, but that was a real difficult time, the yeah. recession. I mean, yeah, we, were, we were in harm's way, we had to lay off police officers, we had to shrink budgets, we had to do those things and somehow we made it. And I yeah. think part of this building and other things that we did were with the idea of we can just show an outward 
face that we can do things. Like we can really achieve things even in the face yeah. of all of this. Um, and, we, and we did it. And the sizzle was cool. I wish we would have had a soccer tournament that went with it. I always thought that was a great name for a soccer tournament. The <laughs> summer sizzle. Sizzle, <laughs> summer sizzle soccer but, tournament. Uh, that's, great. that's right. Yeah. So fairly recently, uh, the DDA, it's, I don't want to say the funding was threatened, but there was a faction out there who uh, wanted to see the DDA go bye-bye. And it went to the voters, and the voters uh, showed up, and they voted to save the DDA. And personally, I didn't think there was any doubt. I really didn't think it was any jeopardy, and, and luckily the voters came through. Uh, but almost immediately after that election, our, our executive director, Molly, ended up leaving. And uh, I was like, oh no, you know, we, mm -hmm. we fought to save the DDA and now our director's leaving. And I'll, you know, I get these email alerts uh, at my desk and it says, uh, new uh, director hired Matt Gibb. And I'm like, I know that you know dude. that guy. <laughs> uh, why? Why did you want to get involved with the DDA? What motivated you to throw your hat in the ring for that? When you are part of a community that you love, and I was very active um, yeah, you a long time ago. And then I wasn't as active because I was onto a new role. I mean, I went and worked for Brooks Patterson at the county and we did great mm -hmm. things there. Uh, and then how do you get back engaged in a community that you love? And um, I'll be honest with you, leadership is tough. It's like when you, when you go through those circles and you're like, well, I'll just come back, it's not as, as easy a path. And so when Molly left, and I know that the DDA now is, they, they bought the Lumberyard property, which is um, great history, but boy, wouldn't it be nice if it was a little bit more pleasant to look at for our <laughs> community? Um, and maybe spurn some growth in our, our, our community. Uh, when she left and the job came open, um, I prayed on it a little bit and really thought, man, that might be an opportunity that I could get back involved. And so, Joe, I, I just applied for it like everyone else. So yeah. there was great candidates that applied for the job. Um, and we went through a rigorous interview process. And um, I'm just grateful that maybe this is a place for me to get reengaged in, in our community. And so when you say, why'd you do it? Well. Um, I didn't really need a job, um, <laughs> I had lots of jobs, um, but I just looked at it as um, something that could be real beneficial for me and the community. And my wife was the clinching blow of the whole thing. I was really second guessing, is this something I should do? Am I even qualified to do this? Maybe I'm not qualified to do this. She said, would the work make you happy and make mm. you really excited about Lake Orion again? And she says, if you can go into it with that attitude and come out and say, yeah, this is the spot that I'll get re-energized, and I came out of that last third interview process and I'm like, I, I, I can't wait if they pick me, <laughs> just pick me, please. <laughs> and so here I am. It's a long-winded answer, but that's, that's, that's why I'm at the doorstep. So. And you were, you were fairly active because there were a number of years where I would cover Dragon on the yeah. Lake and there you were in the park helping to coordinate the chaos of the Dragon yeah. Boat races. Yeah. So you still had your toes in the water, so to speak, and uh, still was active in what was happening in, in Lake Orion. I mean, one of the things that, that we'll tackle at the DDA is not only rebuilding the, I've said to a lot of people, we're at an inflection point right now. Like all of these shiny projects are happening. You all in the township yeah. are facing some of the same Very dilemmas. Yeah. That there's these shiny projects that happen. And then what happens underneath it all? What yeah. percolates underneath? And so in, in the downtown for all of us, which is the village, and our DDA district, we have really great family businesses yeah. that are, at an inflection point, can I afford the rents that are now going up because we have all of these shiny objects? Or mm. can I find the staff? Can I do those types of things? And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited for that work, but what the inflection point is as a community is, you know, those events is so many small amounts of hands are doing so much. Right. So how do we change that, right? And so I'm grateful that they invited me back into things like Dragon on the Lake. You know, we started that festival when Sue Turpin and Reggie Harrison and Lisa Cummins came in and I was the supervisor at the time and they said, we wanna have this festival, do you think we could have a beer tent? And I'm like, what are you even talking about? Right? And so <laughs> just to be part of things is, and help percolate maybe a broader sense of volunteerism in the community was something I'm yeah. really excited about. Yeah, in the, in the 30 years that I've been here, you know, to see what has happened to this community, specifically the downtown area too. I mean, I remember, in the 90s, businesses came and went, came and went, came and went, and there was always vacancies. And I remember at one time there was something like eight or 10 salons at Flint and Broadway, you know? And to see it evolve to become this 
walkable destination with so much to see and do and places to eat. Um, what's the vacancy rate right now? Like it's almost non-existent, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, you would think so, all right? Uh, if, you, if you look behind the curtains a little bit, um, things are changing. You know, Keller Williams um, took over the space um, where Nuts About Chocolate was mm -hmm. and the Elixir right. Closing Shop that a lot of our teams, I'm sure your oh, yeah, kids all shop there a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Um, and so they're, they're finding a new place. Like they want to stay in the community, where would they be? And so, yeah, the space is filled. Um, you know, but then there's some, you know, some spaces around the corner. The, the 20 Front Street team has been working with Christian Mills, a longtime lifelong resident. Right. You know, what does Christian do with the fact that his costs are way up because inflation right. and other things? And then so I've got to pass along those rents and then you take a, a beautiful venue like 20 Front Street and then they say, okay, well, we can absorb as much as we can absorb. Um, but, you know, they can't exactly say, okay, we're going to charge $48 a ticket. You know, right. all of this economy is happening. And so while the vacancy rate looks good, the real direction of where we are from an economy in our community is kind of balancing that against where are we going to end up in three years and five years and, yeah. and helping. And so, you know, maybe a, maybe a talkative guy like me can help in that. <laughs> yeah. Now... We were talking about this before uh, we went live on the air. So I was driving south on M24 and I saw all that green fencing. And there's going to be a number of structures that are going to be taken down. One we talked about is going to be moving. The uh, Victorian home, I mm -hmm. believe, is going to get relocated. Uh, then all this new, uh, I, I would imagine most of it's residential, right? That's going to be going there, the most sherry developments. Talk about the impact that that development is going to have on this community. Well, you know, one is, is it's taking some of our history, and I know that was mindful why they're moving one of the structures. If people are like, you can't just bulldoze our history. But by the yeah. same token, you know, communities that are stagnant are communities that are dying. And, and that means for all of us. And, and you have to have the vibrancy of investment and newness. And so that Mosheri development is going to be a lot of newness, but it's going to be a pricey newness, right? They're, they're talking about price points at the high end to rent those properties that might be as high as $6,000. Now wow. it comes with a boat slip, and I jokingly said the other day, it's come with a boat. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. You know? um, and so that, that will have a, a, a lasting impact. But here's what it'll also do is um, Ori Marine's been empty for three years, and, right. and so it's going to clean that up, and it's going to create a yep. newness that when you're coming into our community, if you've never been here, you'd be like, wow, this is, yeah. look at this place that they have. They've got this history and they've got this newness. It's going to redesign some traffic flow, which will be very helpful. It's going to get rid of some older things that, quite frankly, are maybe a little blighted in, mm -hmm. in the community. Uh, the Lumberyard Project, no different, right? It's, it's a little bit blighted, no matter its history. What does it mean in the long term? Um, we have to have a mentality that we can't be priced out of paradise, right? We're living as a vacation. Yeah. You can't suddenly have a whole community that can afford to have four or five or six thousand dollars a month in rent. Right. You still have to have people that can be here that are our friends and our neighbors and our workers and our, our people that serve great dinners in the downtown. We have to have all of that. So what does it mean? We have to get real strategic about how we diversify ourselves and how we look at housing as a component, how we look at offices and we look at different things and not just be we want to grow we want to grow we want to grow how do we get more strategic in the way we diversify that economy um, and it's a community thing it's not just our DDA district so um, maybe not a specific answer but I'm anticipating this really hard inflection point in two years of can can Dia at Sagebrush can Matt at the at the, uh, the Johnny Blacks can Burge at the at the Fork and Pine, and Drew at the three, you know, yeah. where the worker is going to come from. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. when you see this in other communities, that's what we have to plan right now. Don't yeah. wait for that to happen, but start planning right now. So We, we talk about this, I'm sorry to mean that, but like this comes up a lot at, at the planning commission level, because I'm on mm -hmm. the planning commission for the township as well. <clears throat> and we're always, where are those people going to live? Where's this attainable housing? We don't say affordable, attainal, attainable is probably a nicer way to say it, but um, we see a lot of developments that are like, it's going to be great because they're going to be high end and luxury and right. all this stuff. And it's, it's like, well, that's great. But we have children that may want to live here, right? And where do they go? Where do they live? Yeah, well, some of mine have left because there's nowhere for them to go in, in this area to, to uh, be able to afford. So there is that, that tiptoeing and, and that balance. And then you, you know, we hear a lot too that 
millennials don't want to buy houses, but I find that to be untrue. I think, you know, I think they do. They do want to live here. Well, they, they, they certainly do when they, they say, well, I could pay rent. Even the project mm -hmm. that Kyle Westberg, who's a lifelong member of our community, is doing at the Eman Center. Mm -hmm. where, and, and I've been helping him on that project, converting the school in a historic preservation project, so yeah. we preserve the history, and 31 loft units will go in there, one and two bedroom, and then another building that will be mimicked of the history. Um, but the price points are $1,800 to $2,400. So if a, if a young person can buy a house and their yeah. mortgage payment's $1,100, I mean, to me, it's a no-brainer, really. Yeah. It's like, why would I do that? So um, it, it's a challenge, but it's one that we can, we can meet as a community. Uh, really, it's easy for I us. Agree. We're the place people want to be anyway. That's why that's why most Sherry's coming. It's right. like we are the community that people want to be in. We just have to find a balance. With the fact that there was a double-decker steamship 100 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Don't forget that. People came out here on a rail car, you know? So. Yeah. Sure. And my concern is uh, a rising tide when it comes to rents in that development. Is that going to affect all rents across the board? My rent has doubled in since 2015. Almost 10 years my rent mm -hmm. has doubled. Uh, when I start hearing $6,000 a month for rent, people that are residing in Lake Orion are plant workers and business uh, owners and and stuff like that who's going to be able to afford those rents is I don't know do you envision that do you envision rents all over saying well they're charging six thousand we can charge two thousand it would be a bargain well I I if you if you think about um, diversifying the way that you think about a whole community like a whole community has walkable areas that integrate with each other that you have a blending or remember you know, Lake Orion is a hundred plus year old icon of prosperity. And the fact that the Mosheri family and those boys are gonna they're gonna build beautiful product for it. It's gonna be beautiful there. Well, you know, it is lake living. It is out there on the lake. And if you wanted to buy a house on the lake, Joe, I I couldn't afford it right now. I mean it's it is what it is. Yeah. So it's what we do with the rest of it. It's yeah. what the township does around the village and to the south and to the north and really thinking about how we we build a sustainable kind of community and so it's there i i don't think there's going to be this rising tide that suddenly everybody will get priced out one, one of the greater concerns i have is is are we paying attention to the the culture of of entrepreneurism in our yeah. community are we really paying attention to that mm -hmm. because it's one thing to say we're going to get another restaurant because restaurants can seem to absorb that type of stuff but um you know can the green hippos of the world yeah. be replicated uh, in a different way that builds out this really dynamic, walkable community that mm -hmm. we want. Yeah. Um, that's a larger concern. That's going to be the initial programming effect that we really do at the DDA, is building that, that, those pillars that have that support network. I think that's why it's really important to, for people to know why there is this collaborative effort and, and always has been, in, as far as I can remember, in the last 10 years, and even with Elena at the chamber before I was there, you know how the township and the DDA and the chamber has always worked together mm -hmm. to foster all of that everywhere, right? So um, y having you back, right? We did ribbon cuttings together and you were always there supporting that um, and having your knowledge and, and that entrepreneurial spirit, which I know you have. Um, I think it's really important to continue those collaborative efforts, you know, so that it's, it's a little bit more far and wide. I mean, we're coming with America and Bloom soon, and you know, hopefully, yeah. we can get you on board with that because we snaked, you know, Molly into that. So that's coming. So we're gonna need you to help us, you know. Well, if you if you walked around my yard and you realize I have things that bloom from the beginning to the snowflies, there you um, go. I have it in my heart a little bit. <laughs> to, okay. Uh, See, uh, I think it's just that collaborative to, to have effort, that. Though. Yeah. You know, to to the point, the the best thing that we can do as a community is to recognize that we've been really successful mm -hmm. um, but successful communities have these points where um, we need to really have a good understanding of everybody's talent pool yeah it's easy to have success when you, when it's just running downhill sure. and but we're gonna hit you know inflation starting to hit its point you know my former job of the economic development uh, chief at Oakland County it was my job to know when these things are happening and our real estate market is it is what it is. I mean, if you're if in the downtown, someone wants to charge thirty or thirty-five dollars a square foot, and a lot of people watching the show may well, what does that mean? Um, well, just do the math. I mean, multiply thirty-five times three thousand, and you get right. the math. That's what you have to pay in rent, right? right? 
And so, you know, those inflection points are happening. And so if we can say, what, what's our real talent base? Like, mm -hmm. what talent can the chamber bring that they're not duplicating what the DDA can fulfill? And that what we're, we're kind of wrapping around the corner on some other ideas and we really get targeted, um, then you start to fill in those gaps and you don't have the dip. And Brooks yeah. and I used to call it recession proof. Mm -hmm. And that's the work we're gonna be doing at the DDA is, is when somebody says, I got an opportunity for a grant, I don't know where to start. We never want them to say that. We want them to say, I got this opportunity for a grant, I've got a meeting next week with the exact people in my community that can help me. Yeah. And we're gonna quickly close that gap so we can Great. answer that question. Great. Uh, we're just about out of time, but before we go, uh, I want you to give an update of the Lumberyard Project. Um, when, when you took the job, I'm sure that's one of the things that was laid out in front of you. Like, here's the vision, here's what we want to do. Can you give us a timeline and what's going to be happening with that property? So you'll, you'll see in the next 60 days that um, the, the concept plans that were roughed out um, will be, um, oh, they're up there, yeah. yeah. Uh, the concept plans will be, will be more refined, meaning we're going to bring out of the woodwork that network of people. There was some concern in the interview process of Matt, are you just going to ask your friends? Yeah, I'm going to ask my friends because that's who <laughs> knows how to do this, right? So you'll see the, pl the plans get refined. There's a lot of core work that has to do. The, the, the property that's between the bike trail and the lumber yard is owned by MDOT. Well, that's a starting point, right? So you're going to see that, Joe, that we're going to approach wow. this not as a community that says we've got this. Uh, wouldn't it be cool if somebody develops it? We're going to do the work that gets it developed um, going forward. But while we've got some time, uh, in the meantime, next week we start um, letterboxing. Um, uh, geocaching for, oh, for businesses that. across the state. And there's other communities across the state that do this. Um, um, I'm really fortunate that the board also restructured. So they hired Janet Bloom, mm -hmm. who uh, was the interim, and now she's the assistant director. We're kind of like co-directors a little bit. So she's feverishly putting this together. Um, um, uh, Teresa Rutt, who's on the village council, is an artist. She's carving stamps that are unique to Lake Orion. And there's going to be um, clues and boxes around the downtown area that over the whole month of April you can go and you can find these stamps. Um, and we didn't realize that people from all over the state, other than the Midwest, they come yeah. to places like this just to do this. And yeah, so, yeah. Cool. so look for that. Um, I know that the Small Business Week at the beginning of May, we're going to yep. really be enhancing Small Business Week. The flower fair is coming up um, uh, mid-May, going towards Memorial Day. Even though that's an art center event, um, it's you know it's within our our Ballywick to mm -hmm. uh, to do that. And then uh, next week we're going to be meeting with our business community and just watching the community that we're going to be putting out this little book of big solutions that is mm -hmm. kind of a new mentality of the DDA. That's not just about promoting and attracting people to our downtown, but it's helping those businesses get resources yeah. um, so that we never even has to have to ask the people. The people just come because they're like, this is so dynamic, we have to be there. So over the next 60 days, you're going to see that Lumberyard project get mm -hmm. going. You're going to see some of these other things get going. But, um, you know, uh, our downtown is, is uh, really dynamic. Um, the trolley runs uh, uh, mm -hmm. from Oxford. We just won an award last Thursday, oh, great. taking up on filibustering last bit of time here, but we just won an award <laughs> from Thrive, Oakland County's program that replaced the one-stop shop and some of the other things we did. Um, so it's an award-winning town, and so come and enjoy it and uh, yeah. find those little stands. I love that bond that's been formed between downtown Oxford and dot downtown Lake Orion and yeah. the trolley that commutes people back and forth. Uh, I love passing that trolley. I always see it and it, it just adds character to it does. our downtown. <laughs> it's really great to see. Yeah, we've got to we've got to get the township to do trolley rides so you can have a dinner in downtown and a concert at Wildwood. There you go. And, oh. uh, you know, why not? Why and not? Just, just expand the breadth of it. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a really exciting time. I really love seeing what's happening uh, in the village and the township. And uh, it's a great time to be a, an Orion resident. And I'm proud to live here. There's just something about this community. And uh, I envision great things coming from uh, your office. Well, we're hopeful to par continue to partner with On TV, yeah, and uh, you and I have talked about that. So watch for more to come on, on spread the word of the excitement of who we are. So. Awesome, yeah. and thanks for coming down. Yeah, and thanks, uh, we hope you're gonna the DDA is gonna continue the Elo Live concert series it in is. Uh, the it park is. in the yeah. gazebo, and that's where we're gonna leave you now is a uh, performance from uh, this past summer's uh, Elo Live concert series. We have the Pears performing a song for you. I love the pears.
off the bed. Yeah? Maybe we'll get some in. Your part's really easy. It's just O and it goes like this. Yeah, that uh, particular performance uh, took place at 20 Front Street, and that's a luxury we have in downtown Lake Orion. Normally, the DDALO Live Concert Series is in the gazebo in the mm. park, and so if the weather cooperates, it's a really nice atmosphere to watch a concert. But if the weather doesn't cooperate, <laughs> they move into 20 Front Street, which isn't so bad either. So, no, it's, it's a uh, good spot to be. Yeah, I've seen a handful of concerts at 20 Front Street. It's just such a beautiful it venue. Is. And oh, it's gorgeous. The talent that they get is, is mind-blowing. It's pretty incredible. Right. Yeah. Have you been inside yeah. the, the green room where everybody signs the... Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I my love that. My signature's on that wall. Is it? Yeah, because uh, a number of years ago, I uh, I put together a comedy show at 20 Front Street. Oh. It was uh, just before Christmas, a number of years ago, and we had four comedians uh, perform there. I was the MC, and we had some really great comedians, so that huh. was a lot of fun. You're a producer. Yeah, and I was hoping we were going to keep that going as a regular thing, but it, mm. it didn't happen. But it, it was fun. That was a good time. Yeah, I so. saw Anthony Grappito there once a couple of years. I mean, I've seen a yeah. lot of other things, but I think that was a cool thing to watch, watch him in that environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a beautiful venue. It is. Uh, our next segment, here's, this is kind of interesting. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll learn a new word <laughs> that I had never heard before, <laughs> and now all of a sudden it's everywhere, and it's, it's, in, it's in everyone's vernacular. And I'm like, <laughs> where did this come from? And the first time I heard it, was uh, we were shooting video at Bitter Tom's in downtown Lake Orion. Yeah. And they had prepared a couple of dishes to show off. And uh, I forget the woman's name that manages that, but she she's like, and here's our charcuterie board. <laughs> and I'm like, you're what now? You're whom? I, you're I don't know what that is. And uh, cheese, meat. Snack plate. Olives, uh, yeah, what, what can go wrong? And okay. now, I go out to families and yeah. they got the charcuterie board. Yeah, they were too. kind of like at the leading edge of that. I remember when they came out with that and I, and and then I'd seen it at a couple, I think Oat Soda had one as well. And then you're right, it just <laughs> blew up and then there was butter boards and dessert boards, but good charcuterie board. We just call that a snack lunch at my house. I call it Lunchables. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, having said that, uh, we had a longtime volunteer in our kitchen uh, who prepared a charcuterie board. So let's take a look at that clip now. Everybody, it's your friend Monique Maxim and it's great to be here in the ONTV kitchen and today I'm going to show you how to make a charcuterie 
rows. Now, charcuterie boards have become very popular, and it's just a fancy name for meat and cheese tray. And what I have here is just some salami. Now, this is hard salami, but you can make different roses using Genoa salami if you like that. And the trick to it is you really want a small rim glass. The smaller the rim, I think, the better. Now, I don't have my delicate champagne flute with me today, but you can also do this with a champagne flute, and that looks lovely as well. But so easy. All you do is take your deli cut and press it around the rim of the glass. And just keep doing that, overlapping them just a little bit, and you'll see in no time at all, they'll start to form to your glass and take a little shape. See, as soon as I have the first four down there, they'll kind of start sticking to each other. And then you just want to overlap again at the seams. Now, I have gotten rave reviews. I've done this all the way from Michigan to Florida. Everybody loves a deli cut floral rose on their charcuterie board. But the one thing that I do want to advise you is if it's not all consumed in that day, um, just put it back in a, in a plastic bag, but don't expect it to be a beautiful rose and pull apart petal by petal like this one will. When we get done and present it, it'll pull apart petal by petal, which is just another uh, fantastic part of this easy, easy deli cut floral. So you see there, it's starting to come together and they stay down there around there with no trouble. So before we do the presentation, I'm going to make a second one here on a different size glass. And any kind of glass will work. Just really the smaller the opening. And like I said, I didn't bring my delicate champagne flute. So be mindful. If it's a very delicate glass, you're going to handle it a little bit. So maybe not the family heirloom champagne flute. So we're almost done here, just overlapping as we go around. And you can make these as full as you want. You can use different types of salami. This is the hard, but like I said, again, there's the Genoa. So I'm gonna go ahead and move a little bit of my grapes here so that I can present this on my charcuterie board. Move a few of my grapes over to here. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one here. And here we go for the big reveal. You just flip it over and take it off. And there it is. And then you can take each petal piece by piece and make your little snack, what, however you want to put an apple and some nuts and maybe a little peanut butter in there and wrap it up. And that's going to be delicious and amazing treat. So. Let's flip this one over here. And there we have a simple and beautiful charcuterie board. And I hope you'll give it a try at making your own very soon. So there you go. Uh, between Easter breakfast and Easter there dinner, you, you might just want to have a charcuterie board out for family and guests who might be dropping by throughout the day I and might do try that. them over. I'm curious. Do you have a uh, favorite cheese? I, as I get older, I have oh. I've developed this appreciation for cheese, uh -huh. and I like to say the stinkier the better. Yes. Um, what yes. What is your go to? Is there a cheese that you really enjoy? You know, I do. I like a good stinky cheese, but I also like a triple creme runny mm. cheese. So anything that's you know like a brie or camembert or something like that, but the really triple cream runny one that you uh -huh. can just smear with you know. Um, some onion jam or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Stinkier the better, though. I think Taleggio <laughs> is one of those. You know, like when you cut into it, everybody leaves the room, you get the cheese to yourself. Yeah. For uh, mm -hmm. for Christmas, my niece got me a box of cheese from Horrocks. Have you heard of Horrocks? No. It's a, a pretty popular uh, store that sells everything. And I can't remember, it's up north, I think, as you head toward like the Mount Pleasant area, I think you pass it. Okay. Um, but she picked up some cheese for me there. And so I'll come home from work and put some out with 
crackers and stuff. Yes. And the ones that I decided I really like the best is smoked gouda. Uh -huh. I really like the flavor of smoked gouda. And uh, Munster, am I pronouncing it correctly? Mm -hmm. M-U-E-N-S-T. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a soft cheese, but it's not creamy. quite as soft as cream cheese, but right. a little softer than, say, cheddar cheese. I'm like, where have you been my whole life? That Try was that really, on a turkey really sandwich. Yeah. This yeah. monster's good on turkey. So, so much, yeah, love me a, a good stinky cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so Hoping do I. to have some this week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, last week, or the last time we were here, we had Patricia Shapira, who's yeah. the executive director of Love, Inc., on to tell us some um, all about what they do. But uh, in the next couple weeks, not this weekend, but next weekend, they're having their event, Share the Love their gala their big fundraiser yes their big fundraiser um at indian wood golf course and and um i will be there and i'll be emceeing the live uh auction they have live auction and sun auctions and stuff like that so oh, that's awesome yeah so it's coming up and i'm pretty excited about it but um yeah we have a little promotional video uh, about love inc in general back in october on community media day we had a lot of community groups come in and record little promos for their organization. So this is what we put together for Love Inc. Hi, my name is Patricia Shapira and I am with Love in the Name of Christ of North Oakland County. This is our board chair, um, Denise Zook, DeShane. <laughs> or oh, I don't know if I got that backwards. Don't worry. Um, and what, um, I'm with an organization that's been in around in the community since 2007. We've been around nationally as an affiliate um, since I think it's been around 45 years. There are approximately 110 affiliates of Love Inc.'s across the county and our mission is to mobilize churches to transform lives and communities in the name of Christ. And what that looks like at our Oxford location um, on the campus of Lake Point Community Church is we have an office, we call it a connection center, where when folks call us and they have a need um, have it be for um, rent, utilities, food, they come in and we talk to them for about an hour to figure out exactly how they got into the position that they are and what we can do to help them get out of it. Um, as I said, we've been around since 2007 and we're really happy to be able to do our intakes in person. Um, we haven't always done that, but we thought if we wanted to be in relationship with people, that's one of the things that we need to do. Um, we also offer um, as part of the transformational ministry, a clothes closet where people can go in once they've come into our office and basically we're all about transformation and self-sustainability. So we like to offer them um, options that they can choose so they can participate in getting out of the situation that they're in. And part of that is a clothes closet that we have at Oxford Free Methodist Church. We did have a Bed Blessings and Beyond ministry that had household items, but um, we're looking for another building about a thousand square feet because we're some plumbing issues in the current building. Um, we have probably 20 volunteers in our Connection Center, so that includes um, receptionists and also intake volunteers who listen to the folks who call in. Um, Denise, what else am I forgetting? <laughs> what, what makes, uh, what I'd like to, you to stress is what makes Love Inc. successful. Like the fact when we do the ink take, look at um, the situation and make sure that we're giving them or helping them with the solution that gets them to a better place. Yeah, so we're not an organization that just gives a handout because we're not interested in that. We're, as I said, our mission is to help transform lives. And that's just to show folks, you know, what their God-given talents are. To, to find out how they got in that situation and what we can do to help them help themselves. If um, you would like to help out or learn more about what, what we do, um, our phone number is 248-693-4357 or you can visit us on our website at loveinkofnoc.org. So Love Inc. doing some great things in the community. Uh, again, the date of the, their uh, big fundraiser? April 6th, it's uh, next Saturday. Oh, wow. Do you think there's still some tickets available? Or? I think that that could be arranged, probably right. so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was there last year to shoot video and it's such a glamorous event. It is. It's at Indian Wood, it's yeah. such a great venue to have something like yeah, that. Yeah, so. good food, it's gonna be a plated uh, meal and like yeah. you said, lots of auction items and. Awesome. 
good stories. Yeah. All right. Uh, lots of things happening in the community. Uh, things are going to be ramping up uh, here in Lake Orion as the weather gets warm and more and more events are scheduled to take place. Uh, Becky uh, here at ONTV has put together uh, this week's quick hits to give you an idea of uh, what you can expect in the community over the next week or so. The Orient Library will be hosting a Living in Space workshop today at 2 o'clock. There's still time to join the fun as you live the life of an astronaut and suit up for space flight. This program is for second through fifth grade students. For more information, visit OrientLibrary.org. It will be a lifesaver. The American Red Cross will be hosting a blood drive this Wednesday at the library from 1030 to 5 o'clock. Appointments can be scheduled with Lori at 248-693-3000, extension 435. Walk-ins are also welcome. On Wednesday, the Orient Parks and Recs will be hosting a car bingo for spring break. Bingo will take place in the Orient Center parking lot beginning at 1 o'clock. Numbers will be called over the radio and all ages are welcome to attend. On Thursday, preschoolers can join the Outer Space Fund at the library with a special space story time. Join the library for stories, rhymes, and activities all about outer space. The program begins at 11 o'clock and more information can be found at orientlibrary.org. Calling all high school senior artists, don't miss this amazing scholarship opportunity. Oakland County graduating seniors attending art school in the fall are encouraged to showcase their artwork and earn up to three prizes. The deadline is April 17th. Register at OrientArtCenter.org. Well, it looks like cooler tempers will be sticking around for a while. Wednesday's forecast is calling for morning clouds with a high of 44 and low 29. Mostly sunny on Thursday with a high of 48 and low 28. Sunny skies on Friday with a high 52 and low 35. Showers on Saturday with a high 46 and low 33. And mostly cloudy on Sunday with a high 48 and low 33. Well, that's it for this week's Owen TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Uh, I don't think we touched on it on Quick Hits, but coming up in about a month or so, maybe less than that, less than that. is the Orion Township State of the Township <laughs> Address. And I know Chris Barnett, our Orion Township Supervisor, has a lot of fun with that every yes, year. It's going to be at Woodside on the uh, Canterbury Village campus. And it's going to be in the evening, which I yes. think is a first. Uh, well, I think they did one in 20, 2016, I remember it okay. being in the evening. But everyone since then has been in the morning. Yeah. But it'll, you know, hopefully get more people that can come from the community because it's a lot of fun, honestly, yeah, yeah. and it's good information. Um, so hopefully a lot of people will be there. Yeah, there's going to be a movie theme, and I'll be <laughs> helping out on that. Uh, yeah. Movies are right up my alley. Yes, so they are. We which, have some fun things planned. That's making me a little nervous, I'm not going to lie. I'm over here trying <laughs> to figure out what's actually happening, and Joe's not <laughs> telling me, which I think is mean, but <laughs> no. It's a work in progress. <laughs> no, that's always a fun thing. I mean, when we worked on it last year, you know, we did the old-timey stuff here the on Monopoly the stage. Uh, the Monopoly theme, stuff. Yeah. Two years ago was the Star Wars theme, I believe, yeah. because it fell on May, May the, the 4th, 4th, Be With You. Uh, so, yeah. So what's the date on that? The It's the 18th of the April. The 18th yeah. in the evening. So uh, yeah. the, the Township Supervisor usually recaps all the great things that have happened over the past year and looks ahead to what's, what's coming. coming up, including the major developments that are happening at the GM uh, Orient Assembly yeah. plan and everything else that's going on in this community. And update uh, on Great Lakes, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. GLAC. I'm still getting used to saying GLAC. <laughs> but from what I hear, things are going really well they over are. there. Yeah. Uh, people are really embracing it and loving it. They are. It. They so, really are. Yeah. And and they're doing a good job. You know, staff is, you know, they've got a lot of things that they're trying to figure out, in, in you know, with this, this new um, building, and they're doing a great job. Aaron Watley and, and Chelsea are doing amazing, and everybody's pitching in. But they've got a lot of new programming that's coming out and, mm. you know, the, the uh, camps and all of that kind of stuff. So it'll be interesting, but um, it's going to be... It's going to be a great community center. Yeah. Now, a common question I get almost on a daily basis is, you know, there's been discussion about the township offices moving to the GLAC building. Mm -hmm. So people say, well, what's going to happen to Owen TV? Are you guys moving out? No, we own this part of the building. We are going to stay here. And uh, we'll find out what the future of the other half of the building is. But Owen TV is not going anywhere anytime no. soon. So you got this brand new 
garage out here. Come on. Yeah, if you've uh, visited the Orient Center lately, you'll see some construction going on. Uh, we're attaching a garage to this building where we can park our truck and keep equipment warm and safe. And uh, we're looking forward to getting uh, able to use that. We're really, really close. I think they're putting in uh, the drywall yeah. or whatever it is they're putting in there. And so we're really close to being able to move our vehicles in there and it's exciting yeah and uh, with rents going up I talked to Ian about possibly renting that space maybe mm. staying in a loft or something at the top I'm, I'm just joking I'm not going to live it would be appealing though I mean I spend most of my time here anyway so I mean you might as well <laughs> <laughs> I looked over at you and you're I'm nodding like, wait like, a minute really? I thought you met I thought you were going to say somebody else renting space for no. storage and then you went there and I'm like Oh my gosh. Well, my rent keeps going up, so <laughs> I'm sure you know, give me a deal. <laughs> On no. that note, we'll wrap up uh, this episode of Orient today. Kim, thanks for joining me again. Thank and, you uh, for having me, and thank you for the cake. That was very nice of you. Oh, I can't wait to cut into that. I know. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.